What's up, guys? Had a lot of people this year, you know, message me through the course of the year asking about my jig head minnow setup. You know, I've uh, started really using this, I guess, probably back, oh, well, after Wheeler probably won Gunnersville, I think it's kind of when it exploded, but it's something that I've really been doing for crappie for four or five years and just never really let it click that I should have been doing it for bass more, even though I caught a lot of big bass while doing it. Actually, probably about three years ago, I thought about it. I put a, a regular fluke, the fluke, Zoom V fluke, put it on a G kid and tried it when we were down at Rayburn. I actually made top 10 there, but I caught them all on Yosuri Jerkbait. But it, I thought about it there and I'm like, man, I really wonder if you could catch these suckers if you put a bigger metal bait on a jig head and threw it at these fish. A lot of them are like 15 to 20 foot and they couldn't really, they weren't really coming up to the jerk bait as far to, it, that I needed them to come up to get it because the jerk bait was only getting down like 10 and a lot of the fish were like 10 foot deeper than that. And it's like, it just wasn't, didn't have the drawing power to pull them up. You know, Rayburn was a little off colored and uh, rigged one up and like the first three fish I threw out I caught and they were all white bass and I put it down, never picked it back up. Just brain dead. You should have just threw it a little bit more, was that close to figuring it out and just did not throw it anymore. Just gave up on it. And uh, now here it is, it's exploded and it's this unbelievable, deadly effective technique that is catching big ones everywhere. And uh, it doesn't really matter if it's a shallow bottle, body of water, deep, clear, dirty, it just works. I mean, it's, it really works. And uh, so I was gonna sit down and <clears throat> show you guys really what I use. I use uh, the black custom lure, forward facing tungsten uh, jig heads. You know, these are an awesome jig head. They've got a three alt hook in them. Uh, tungsten, obviously, he's got them in a lot of different sizes, but I use eighth quarter, uh, three eighths and halves. Three eight, well, I'm gonna say probably the quarter and the three eighths is what I use the most, but there is times that you need an eighth and there are times you need a half. Uh, you know, I've had four top pins this year, and out of those four, three of them have come using this right here exclusively. And I don't know if I've weighed in more than two or three fish an event uh, using anything else. At Champlain, it was a five fish event. They were all weighed in on it to make every single one of them. Uh, and the rest of them, you know, were Bass Pro Tour events. So uh, one of them was at James River, which I didn't use this any at all. I used the Ozuri jerk bait nearly, mostly exclusively, and, and a spinner bait some. But at Del Hollow and Toledo Bend, every fish I weighed in came on a Demiki, except for like two or three a day I caught on Yosuri Jerkbait. But, uh, you know, that being in every fish format, still the brunt of my fish came on a, on a Demiki rig. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys what I use. These, like I said, I use these jig heads. These are extremely uh, deadly jig heads. They show up really good on live scope because they're tungsten. Um, you can see, I mean, they're, they're tungsten. So that's a half right there. That's a pretty small jig head um for a half ounce three eighths they come in three pack quarters and then the eighths come in a four pack so um i'm gonna rig one up for you this is a sakamoto shed depths makes obviously you guys it's a five inch they're almost incredibly impossible to get uh just so happens i've got a bunch of them before these became very popular and uh, i'm gonna show you how to rig one up I'm actually going to be throwing this here pretty soon. We go to Lake St. Clair, so I'm going to go ahead and rig this one up. I don't have any of my stuff here. All my stuff I left in Florida or drove down to Florida, flew back home, so I can't shoot everything that I like to use with this, but I have some of this stuff laying around. But I'm going to rig one up for you guys. It's really simple. I usually put some super glue on this too when I use Sakamoto Shad I, uh, or Sakamoto, however you say it. But I usually use a Z Man Jerk Shad. I just do, it's a last tech. I can catch like 20 bass on one bait. Uh, but in the uh, the Z-Man Jerk Shed, I use the 3.5 and the four inch mainly. That's what I use. This here is a five inch and, and it is like a legit five. They actually make this in a three and a half as well. And it just doesn't seem like a three and a half to me. It seems more like a three inch. Uh, so I like, or actually I think they call it a four inch, but it seems more like a three and a quarter, so it just seems a little smaller. But this five inch, I really like it, especially for small mouth. Man, it's super simple to rig up, especially with Sakamoto sheds. It's got these little holes down it. So once you rig it right once, you'll always know which one of them to come out, out of. 
But uh, what I love about these heads, they've got a great little keeper right here. They really do hold your bait up very, very well. Uh, it's a lot like the Queen's Tackle jig head. You can see it. It's a really, really good jig head. And uh, sharp hook. But you just go right in the center there. And of course, I am a perfectionist, so my stuff has to be absolutely perfect. But for this jig head, I come out between the third and the fourth hole on the back of these. I like just a little bit more hook out of the back than a lot of guys, you know, I mean, you don't want to get this thing bunched up like that, okay? It's not gonna, it's not gonna work right. So I like it, instead of being just perfectly straight on there, I like it to just be a little bit more than that. And uh, you see this bait's got the fins on it, so it's gonna allow this, when you're sitting there shaking it, it's gonna allow this bait to really rock back and forth. And uh, that's pretty much, I mean, it's just, it's really a dumb technique, but it's just incredible, incredibly deadly. And I know that looks pretty small on that big bait, but I'm just telling you, these fish, you don't miss them. I mean, they, I don't know if they come up and get it from underneath. I mean, when you're watching them on scope, you'll see them swim up behind it and they just start trailing it and trailing it. So I don't think that they really eat it from the back. I think when they actually eat it, they just, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it might look big, but it's really not. I mean, guys, come on, I mean, fish eat a lot of big bait. And uh, I, I really just think that's pretty much just a snack size meal for even a small mouth or a spotted bass. But uh, incredibly deadly. You do not have to have these depth sakamala sheds. I mean, that's what you keep hearing. It's a trend. I mean, you know how trends are. Everybody's like, oh, sakamala, sakamala. And you think it's, it's the deal. They do work. They're incredibly efficient. I do think maybe if you are fishing pressure fish and they haven't seen the Sakamata shed a lot and they're bad to follow, which you'll have to watch them on scope. If you notice these fish are constantly following your bait and you're only getting one out of every 10 to bite, I think the Sakamata shed might make a difference, but I don't really think that the only thing that it would make a difference on this bait versus the jerk shed is it's got these little fins on the side that helps it to roll just a little bit better. It glides maybe, uh, it helps the bait uh, to not track to the boat as quickly. Uh, it, it, maybe it, it's more level in the water. It's just a little bit slower with more rolling action. Instead of like, you know, a jerk shed doesn't have these fins on it. It comes through the water maybe just a little quicker uh, than the Sakamata shad would. But in my opinion, if a fish is going to eat it, it's going to eat it. I mean, that's just, that's just all there is to it. But the most important thing for me is the jig head. And uh, I, I, these jig heads are incredible. I mean, like I said, this is a half, which I use pretty much exclusively for small mouth, a three-eight or a half, but large mouth, it's more of a quarter to three-eight. Uh, but these, these, these jig heads are awesome. You really need to check them out. I'm telling you, tungsten does make all the difference in the world, even in this technique, because you can see it a lot better on scope. It just gives you a better, broader return. This bait's got, a, or this jig head's got a great hook in it. And all you need for it, which you don't have to, but I mean, in my opinion, if you're using any kind of spinning tackle at all anymore these days, throwing anything, Ned rig drop shot, whether it be a jig head minnow, whatever, even a shad wrap on a spinner rod, I'm going to have braid uh, with fluorocarbon leader. Can't go wrong with the Ozuri Super Braid. This is 15 pound Ozuri Super Braid uh, in yellow, which is what I used last year. This year I'm using white. Uh, color doesn't matter. It's whatever you like, you prefer with your eyes. I like quite a lot. Uh, that's why, I, I mean, I went to it this year, and uh, it's it's by far my favorite. Uh, and, of course, the Ozuri T7. You can get both of these pretty much at any place on in the planet that sells fishing line. You're going to be able to find Yozuri pretty much. I mean, everywhere, just about everywhere I go in, tackle stores all over the country we go, they carry Super Bright and they carry T7. This T7 is incredible stuff. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. This is a uh, eight pound. Eight pound is what I use almost exclusively when I go up north fishing for big smallmouth. I actually step it up to like ten or twelve, uh, just because it seems like nearly all of them are four plus pounders, three and a half anyways. And uh, smallmouth are pretty dumb. I mean, for the most part, they pretty much just bite. If you put it in front of them and uh, you are working on your bait correctly or something that just kind of looks a lot flock, uh, real natural color they eat. I mean, yes, they are a very particular fish. They can be the most particular fish at times, but for the most part, you show them something like this that they're not seeing a lot of yet, uh, 
they just buy. I mean, it really, the line size doesn't matter. But if you are a believer in line, which I am, but I just don't think it matters a lot up there most of the time, um, you might you might want to throw six. But uh, I usually use the Ozuri Super Floor Carbon Leader is what I use a lot. That's what I like. But uh, I don't have any of that here. I've just got the T7. So you can't go wrong with the T7. The Super Floor Carbon Leader is what I like. And uh, I'll tie uh, Enhanced Alberto Knot from, from our Braid to Floor Carbon Leader. Uh, throw that on a 7.3 medium light arc reinforcer spinning rod with a arc gravity spinning reel. And that is my setup, guys. I hope that helps. Go get you some of these black custom lures, tungsten, four-face, and sonar jig heads. Like I said, that's this is the jig head I've used all year. And uh, man, I can legit count on one hand the number of fish I've lost. It has been an incredible jig head, and it is awesome for this technique. Go check it out, guys.